This offshore oil rig is as wide as two football fields and 16 floors high, and it weighs more than an aircraft carrier. This oil platform is called Appomattox, which is located in the Gulf of Mexico, 130 kilometers away from Louisiana in North America. But it started a few years ago from South Korea, where thousands of workers and engineers were building this oil platform. Seven years later, when Appomattox was ready, the engineers faced a challenge which they were doing for the first time in their lives. Now the problem was that such a large structure had to reach the Gulf of Mexico from South Korea. And for this, the world's largest marine transport vessel was called. Lifting the Appomattox oil platform and placing it on the vessel was a task that would take at least seven days. But suddenly they came to know that a storm has come in the Pacific Ocean, and this storm has turned into a super typhoon. This type of typhoon comes once in 20 years. This typhoon, moving at a speed of 315 kilometers per hour, can hit South Korea anytime after seven days. And everyone knows that when a super typhoon strikes somewhere, it does not leave without causing damage. Now it became a challenge for the workers, engineers, and transport experts that they had to do the work of seven days in just three days. That is, if the Appomattox oil platform is not lifted from the shipyard, loaded onto this marine vessel, and dispatched within three days, then years of hard work can be wasted in an instant. This was a problem that had everyone stunned. This oil platform was the biggest project of Shell Oil Company, and this was the reason why they did not want to make even a small mistake. To avoid the super typhoon and to dispatch Appomattox before time, it was very important to complete the remaining work, for which an extra team of workers was called. The workers worked day and night and started preparing Appomattox for transport as soon as possible. On the other hand, the management along with the Meteorological Administration were keeping an eye on the movement of the super typhoon. They had a hope that perhaps this super typhoon would change its direction, but their hopes were dashed when they came to know that the typhoon was coming straight from the Pacific Ocean towards South Korea. The team of workers put in a lot of effort and completed the entire work of apothecary in just three days. And now, it was the turn to lift this huge structure and place it on the floating dock. The weight of this entire structure was said to be 41,000 tons. With the help of huge hydraulic jacks, it was pushed inch by inch, and it was placed on the floating dry dock. With the help of tugboats, the floating dock was pulled away from the shipyard, from where it was to be loaded into this marine vessel. This is the world's largest marine transport vessel, which can easily carry a weight of 98,000 tons. And on this, Appomattox was to be taken to the other corner of the world, the Gulf of Mexico. The next morning, Appomattox was taken off the floating dock. Now the oil platform started floating on water for the first time. With the help of tugboats, the platform was pulled to the deep water, where this marine vessel was already standing. On the other hand, the super typhoon was rapidly moving towards South Korea. The super typhoon was now just 48 hours away, and as it was coming closer, its signs were also emerging in the sea. The winds and waves in the sea were increasing, which was a sign of danger for the Appomattox. The next moment was very delicate. Loading the oil platform on the vessel is a very complicated task. For this, first the vessel intakes water and the water tanks present inside it, due to which it goes inside the water. Then the tugboats pull the oil platform and take it on top of the vessel. And then finally, the vessel takes out the water again, due to which the vessel rises upwards. But this work is not as easy as you saw in this. It is very important for the sea to be calm for this work, because if this work is done in waves, then Appomattox will not be able to load on the vessel in the correct alignment, and this thing can be dangerous for both the vessel and Appomattox. Due to the waves and strong winds of the super typhoon, this work was not possible, and the stress level of the entire team had become very high. Luckily, the team was given only two hours the next morning by the meteorological department, in which there were chances that the sea would be completely calm. If this work was not done in these two hours, then there would be no chance after that. The super typhoon was now only 36 hours away, as told in the morning the sea was completely calm. At the first opportunity, the oil platform was pulled on top of the vessel, and the vessel took it out of the water and loaded it on itself. Appomattox finally managed to leave South Korea several hours before the super typhoon. Shell had completed the first challenge by saving its oil platform from the super typhoon, but this did not mean that there would be no more challenges in the future. After a journey of several months, the oil platform was unloaded again in South Texas, because there were four modules that were being manufactured here. The modules were fitted one by one on the platform, and once again 
it was sent to its destination 130 kilometers away, where it has to be kept for the next 40 years. After seven years of hard work, finally the time had come when Appomattox had to be connected to the oil well 30,000 feet below. The place where Appomattox is floating in the water, the bottom of the sea is 7,400 feet deep. This is so deep that almost three Burj Khalifas can fit in it. But the oil well to which Appomattox was to be connected was 22,600 feet below this depth. The water pressure is very high at such a depth that it is impossible for a human to go there and then carry out any mission. Therefore, it was decided to use a remotely operated underwater vehicle to connect Appomattox to the opening of the oil well at the bottom of the sea. The installation crew, which was installing underwater pipelines from a different platform, sent ROV inside the sea with the help of a crane. This is a very complicated job in which the pipeline has to be landed exactly above the opening of the oil well. The control to carry out this work with such accuracy at a depth of 7,400 feet is in the hands of the ROV operator sitting above. Luckily, this work was done in the first attempt itself. Now the pipe had to be transferred from the installation platform to the Appomattox. This process is called riser transfer, in which four different vessels work together. First, a chain was taken out from the Appomattox, then the ROV took this chain and took it to the second ship. This chain was pulled from this ship by the second platform, and then finally the Appomattox pulled this chain and turned the pipe towards itself. After this, the drilling work was started. The pipe had to be drilled to the oil well, about 22,600 feet below the seabed. After many months of drilling, the pipe finally reached the oil well. Now it was time to pump the oil. The whole team had gathered to see this moment and the oil pump was turned on with the help of a button. When the oil was pumped for the first time from 30,000 feet below, a different happiness was visible on everyone's faces. The seven years of hard work of the workers, engineers, and management had borne fruit. The flow of oil and its quality were absolutely perfect. Today, Appomattox produces 175,000 barrels of oil every day, from which so much fuel is made, which 4 million vehicles use in one day. Shell believes that Appomattox will continue to produce oil in this way for the next 40 years, OIE, till 2060.